Hi guys, Mikey from 9A Clubhouse here. Hoping you've all had a great week so far and you're all keeping safe. Uh, this is the latest in a continuing series of videos where I'll be helping you get started making music on your computer. Today I wanted to talk about how to create music in Reaper with the free VST instruments that we've downloaded from the internet. Um, we'll be, today we'll be looking at the basics of how to enter chords, melodies and harmonies using the piano roll editor and a couple of easy tricks to get you started, uh, especially if you don't know any music theory. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Uh, so here I am um, in a fresh Reaper project and the first thing I'm going to do is right click over on the uh, left hand side here and select um, virtual instrument on your track. This will bring up our plugin selection box like normal and if we know the name of the instrument we're looking for we can just type this into the filter box at the bottom. Um, so I like to think of the filter box as being like a search bar. Um, I've already got the instrument up that I'm interested in, which is called uh, Spitfire Audio Labs. Um, so yeah, if you um, know what you're after, you can type that in there. So just a quick word about Labs. Um, this instrument is actually a whole platform of really amazing multi-sampled instruments. Um, and I totally recommend you check them out um, if you're interested in really high quality quirky cinematic type sounds um, there are a bunch of guys from London and they, they do amazing work and um, the best thing about them is they're all free so yeah check them out um, they're on yeah just google them up Spitfire Labs Spitfire sorry Spitfire Audio Labs really cool um, okay so now that we have our instrument loaded up you can see that Re Reaper has created a channel here for us um, and we've got a red record enable button um, lit up. Uh, that means that we could load up our virtual MIDI keyboard and have a play around auditioning the sounds um, by playing around on our typing keyboard. So um, you can do this by hitting view at the top here and selecting virtual MIDI keyboard and it's about four fifths away down the menu so hit that. I've already resized mine uh, so it's a little bit bigger than uh, it opens up with normally so you might have to do that if you want to get a, a bigger size um, and you can play and record um, your music by using the virtual MIDI keyboard um, but today oh actually no let's do that um, so to do that, you just hit record and I'll play some notes on my typing keyboard. Oh, that's right. I'm going to hit the. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. So, um, you can see that it's asking me if I want to. Um, save it or delete it. So this it does that. Reaper does that after every time you record anything into it. Um, I'll save that, and you can see that it's um, got this white region, what we call them, um, regions um, in DAWs, uh, places where you put stuff. Um, um, so we've got this white region with black note information inside of it, and. Um, have a listen to listen back to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool <laughs> so this way of uh, recording music into Reaper is really suited to people who get inspiration from trying stuff out in real time um, and uh, if you're one of those people you're um, probably um, want to invest in something like this. This is a MIDI keyboard, and you probably, you guys have probably seen them in at Clubhouse. Um, uh, and of, of obviously, um, it'll if you've um, learnt some piano or keyboard skills at school, that would be really, really helpful if you're going to get one of those. 
Um, but if you don't have a MIDI keyboard like that, and you're just using your typing keyboard, um, this this way of recording s stuff into Reaper is, has a few drawbacks, um, and namely some of some of those drawbacks are some people aren't comfortable forming chords and scales on the keyboard yet. Um, they couldn't, they can't afford a MIDI keyboard, for instance, and the typing keyboard is is uh, a bit too clunky, or there's too much latency, or you know, it just doesn't sound feel that like expressive to them. And you know, if that's you, then don't worry, because I'm now going to show you another really awesome way of recording music into Reaper that doesn't require much in the way of uh, or anything in the way of musical theory knowledge or MIDI keyboard skills. So um, let's get rid of the stuff. I'm just going to select it and press delete. Um, and I'll get rid of the MIDI um, virtual MIDI keyboard because we don't need that at the moment. Um, so I'm going to create a region with nothing in it. Um, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold down control or command if I was on a Mac, um, and then just left click and drag. And I might make that, uh, I don't know, four, yeah, maybe four bars long. Oops, no, that's three bars. Duh. Let's make it four bars. Yep, cool. Um, so, yeah, like, like I was saying before, a region is a container that we can write pitch and rhythm information into to create chords, beats, and melodies. And you can see at the moment this one's got nothing in it. So um, what we'll have to do to put stuff into it is we'll double-click it and... Oops, let's open up on the other window. We open up this uh, thing here, which is um, the Piano Roll Editor. Um, this way of editing and writing music is, like I said, it's the piano roll editor and it's pretty much common to almost every modern music program has one of these in one form or another. Um, so piano roll editing represents all the pitches over on the left here. Um, so um, you can see there's a playable keyboard over here and you've got really high notes up the top. And down the bottom, we've got really low notes. Um, so, you know, high frequencies up here, low frequencies down here. And um, time is represented from left to right. So those are bar numbers up the top. And these are beats of bar numbers. So there's beat two of bar number one, beat three of bar number one. And then, you know, you can see but beat three of bar three is 3.3. .3. So it's, that's what it is. Um, so how this works is you can just like literally click and drag and draw in stuff like musical information, right? Um, and actually, where's, uh, usually it comes up with... Yeah, we go. There's velocity information there down the bottom there as well. So you can see they're all red, um, and we've got that velocity information. Um, so let's. <laughs> oh god. Okay. <laughs> So you can see as the playhead scrolls across in time that my notes play back. So that's how time and uh, pitch works in Piano Roll Editor. Um, so uh, the other th the other element that works in the Piano Roll Editor is the velocity that we were talking about before. And so I'm just going to select all of this and pull some of these velocities down and you should be able to hear what that's doing right so you can obviously hear that uh, velocity is is tied to the um the the volume of those notes 
Um, so literally velocity is uh, a, a term that describes the relative velocity that you hit <laughs> a piano key or a keyboard key. Um, so that's like in MIDI language, that's like literally the volume of that note. So if you want to um, get in there and get under the hood and start programming stuff um, to make it sound more human, that's one way of doing it, um, changing up your velocities. Um, so this is one way of making music with Reaper. Another way, sorry, we've already looked at one. Um, but to be honest, most of you guys will find it pretty frustrating writing in chords and melodies randomly without a good knowledge of harmony and chord scale relationships. So you'll spend ages trying to figure out what notes sound good together when, you know, to be honest, we'd all rather just be writing parts, right? So, but don't worry about it though, because I'm going to now show you uh, two tools that will really help make chords and melodies, uh, help you make chords and melodies, sorry, that really, that they sound really good together, um, and you won't need to know any theory at all. Um, okay, so I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff. Delete. Um, so, it's really two tools. Um, the first of these tools is called Snap to Key, and it's down the bottom here of your piano roll window in Reaper. And it's a pretty innocent looking little box, but it's really powerful. Um, okay. Um, so we talked briefly about keys when we did our introduction to Looper Man. Um, but just to recap, essentially a key is a group of notes that sound good together. So if you play them at the same night time, they become a chord. If you play them in a sequence, they become a melody. So if I turn on snap to key and choose a key to work with, um, I can't play a bad sounding note or enter, enter any notes that are outside that key, okay? You're, they're just going to snap into that, whatever that particular key is. So I'm just going to play a chromatic scale, which is like all the notes. Right, so you can hear how that is. And if I choose snap to key um, and say we'll choose, I don't know, something a little bit different, like maybe E minor... E natural minor, and do the same thing. You can hear how it's all, it's very much a tonality, it's inside a key. Um, and that's, yeah, that's basic, That's basically the, um, you can't, I can't play something that's outside of E minor. So, so that F natural there, if I play that, or write, try and write it in, it just goes straight to an F sharp. And it won't actually let me put that F sharp on the uh, piano roll. Okay. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. But, it okay, it gets cooler than that. It gets better than that. Um, the next tool um, we're going to talk about is called MIDI Paint. Um uh, and it allows us to paint chords directly into the piano roll editor. And so, uh, let me just let me just demonstrate how this works. Okay, so um, because I'm using chord, I'm doing chords. I'm going to change my quanti uh, my quantize grid down here to um, one beat. Okay, so you can see that the grid's just like gotten really fat and big, um, and that's because chords don't often move that much. Um, you know, you don't have four, like, you don't often have like eight chords in a bar or anything like that. Um, now, I can go ahead right now um, and do my MIDI paint thing. So the, the key command for this, to access this mode, the key command is Control, Alt, and Shift, or uh, Command, Option, and Shift, I believe, on a Mac. Um, and so uh, let's say I'm going to do a E minor sort of thing. So I'll start on E here. And the root notes have already got this little yellow bar on them. And I'll just uh, hold those keys down, left click, and drag up or down, doesn't matter. And you can see that I've created a chord there. Um, and so it'll just keep, and if you keep going, it'll keep 
painting and chord tones, so you can keep going. But I usually stick to four note chords, um, yeah, just to keep it from getting too cluttered. Um, so you can literally just go through there. Uh, I'll just do here we go. Now. Um, and maybe one over here. All right, so I'm just going to move that over here. And let's have a listen to that. Cool. Well, that was... I didn't even know what it, that was going to sound like. This doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> Oops. What am I doing? Um, so this is probably the easiest and best feature I've ever seen in a recording program to help get you writing evocative pro sounding chords without any music theory knowledge whatsoever so what it makes this be, this even better is that you can try different chords uh in your in your progression and see if they work better than the your first idea like my first idea was literally just like that um so once you've painted in your chords initially you can select a chord um just like you would um, select anything else in Reaper, just like right click and drag, and you get a box, and then you can just... That looks pretty crunchy, and just drag it um, up and down. And this is a really cool way of changing your voicings of your, of your chords as well. Can you see how I'm just sort of like nudging things and it's like choosing different voicings? Oh, so dope. Um, and you can do this, I'll do this over here as well. Um, I'll move that down, maybe this one up. So. Um, hmm, is that what I want? Let's try that again. starting to sound cool so you can see that when I'm trying stuff out like if I've got a chord selected like that it'll automatically just snap into the key and like um, yeah this the the tool and Reaper won't let you play won't let you drag your chord to somewhere that it doesn't isn't part of the key and so it's really, really quick and really easy to um, write great sounding chords this way. So now obviously the snap to key combined with the MIDI paint tool is great for writing chords, um, but snap to key uh, will really help out with your melody writing as well. So I'll, I'll do it in the same instrument um, channel, but you can actually um, write your melodies and harmonies and everything different to your chords. But to do this, um, I'm going to change up my quantize grid setting down the bottom here um, to something a little bit um, uh, like a smaller resolution. So maybe like an eighth note, that one there, one over eight, or a sixteenth note, the uh, one over sixteenth. Let's try, let's try eighth notes for a start. Um, and that's I just do that so I can get a, a smaller resolution and for my um, melody notes um, so I can um, so yeah once you've got that um, quantized grid sort of set up where you want it you can just click in a melody so let's see I might start off there and obviously you can um, change the length of your notes by going on to the um, the ends of them and just clicking and dragging so okay and then mm, something like that uh, let's see what does that sound like mm. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm 
I'm just having to play around. Let's have a listen to that. Oh, I got lucky. Sounds pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, once you've got a melody you like and some chords that you like, um, it's actually really easy to create a harmony for that melody also with Snap to Key. Um, and I'll show you how, how you do that now. It's... Um, you just select your melody notes, just like you do everything else in Reaper by right-clicking and dragging. So just that top line, and you can see they've all gone white-ish. Um, and then to copy them, um, on, on a PC you hold down Control, but on a Mac I believe it's Command. And then you just click and drag. And you can see that it's, it's copied that... Um, that melody note out but it's also snapped it to the key so let's have a listen to that and see if that sounds any good oh yeah that sounds all right let's try that sounds better yeah cool i like that better so it takes a little bit of playing around with, but you know you can pretty quickly build up um, harmonies really easily with Snap to Key as well. Um, so you know, well that, yeah, yeah, it's it's like, um, yeah, it's a pretty powerful. T it's an amazing tool actually. I'm I'm really stoked that to be able to show you guys this because it'll really supercharge your creativity. Yeah. Um, okay, so that pretty much wraps things up for today. We've covered quite a lot of ground. Um, we've talked about how um, how to create things in the piano roll. Uh, we've talked about snap to key, MIDI painting, how to compose chords, melodies, and harmonies in Reaper. And hopefully you can see how easy it is to write really evocative, pro-sounding chords uh, melodies and harmonies in Reaper without knowing a bunch of music theory beforehand. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, until the next video, I hope you all stay safe, um, get really busy and get creative, and um, look after each other. Bye for now.